two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Gateway Christian Church. Uh, as we're uh, broadcasting to everyone's home, this is our home edition, I suppose. Um, this is, we're just uh, feel blessed that we're able to do this. Uh, and one's able to get this signal in their home. And I know uh, we're all kind of uh, probably starting to get a little bit of cabin fever. Um, I just pray that, you know, we just we focus on, on our Lord and we uh, try not to get in everyone's way, so to speak. But before we start, let's, uh, let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, Lord, for this, uh, this great morning that we're, we have. Yeah, every morning is great. It's so every morning that you made. We thank you, Lord, for having the technology to do this um, as everyone is home. I pray everyone is uh, well and uh, blessed, Lord. I pray, Lord, if everyone is, is sick, Lord, that you heal them, Lord, and, and comfort them. Uh, anyone who's lost any you know, loved ones, Lord, I pray that you uh, you be with the family and comfort them as well. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. You are, you are our Savior. You are Lord. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Behold the Lamb of God who takes away, who takes away the sin. Confess and know that 
what's going to force this country and force this world and through the media. So I told my wife from now on, we're not watching the news any longer. I'm not watching it. Because there's nothing good comes from it. So I'd rather watch a cartoon than watch that stuff. So uh, we're going to be uh, not taking our offerings today, but uh, media is open. The banks haven't shut down. So if you you would bless us, if you would pray about it and do whatever you can. I know things are tight everywhere, and but you can be blessed because God promised that. He said. He'll pour out a blessing on us that we won't even be able to. It'll be tremendous. So consider that. And Gopi Box is always open. So I'm going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to get into God's word. And we're going to be breaking bread. So, Heavenly Father, I see what these times are bringing, Father, that there is so much distrust of the government, even that. People are just making things up. People are going in licking food products in supermarkets. And I could see it's getting very close to your time, Father, that no one, no one really cares for their fellow man. And that's not what you want, Father. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come quickly, Father. But while we're here, Father, let us be watchful. Let us be watchmen on the walls, Father. May we share. Because at this time, I believe there's going to be a great revival. <coughs> and my prayer is that each and every one of us will seek after what your desire is for our lives, Father, what you will have us do. So once again, I lift all those that are in the medical field, those that are in hospitals and in offices that are suffering right now, Father, I ask your blessing on our first responders all of our police, our military, Father, and all those that are putting their lives on the line because your word tells us no no greater blessing is but one that would lay down his life for his friend, Father. And these doctors and nurses, I ask you to lift them up, keep them safe, Father. I lift all of our households to you, Father, and, and lift us up. Give us the strength and the courage to not fear, Father, because we know fear is not of you because you tell us over and over again that you will be with us wherever we go and whatever we do. So I thank you for that. I thank you for all the households represented here, Father, and I ask a blessing on them to keep them safe. I thank you, Father, for how bountiful our food in our food closets have become, Father, and I, I ask that in Jesus' name that if there's someone in need that you use us, Father, you help us get to them and show them your love, Father. So once again, I thank you for this service today that we're going to have for Pastor Joe and his family and for the word that he will share, Father, and I pray that the word will just comfort everyone that is watching it, Father. So once again, I thank you for this day. Thank you for getting us here. But most of all, Father, I thank you for blessing our president, our vice president, and all those that you've placed in charge, Father. Keep them safe and keep them strong. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God let this happen. Yeah. 
So let's pray one more time and we'll get right into our message. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless it to us, through us, Lord, and may it be nutritious for our spirit in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. It says in Acts 12, beginning in verse 1, Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass or persecute some of the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. So here, as we saw last week, James, one of the inner circle, you remember Peter, John, and James, the brother of John, the beloved. James was actually hidden with the sword or, or beheaded, as we would say today, through Herod. What says Herod here? Herod is Herod Agrippa. He's the grandson of Herod the Great, who we saw back in the Christmas story, who killed all the boys two years and under Herod the Great, a very evil, wicked king. Herod Agrippa I, who we're looking at here, his grandson, was someone who observed the dietary laws of the Jews, although he was Adamian, he wasn't really Jewish, he did the things that pleased the Jews. And one of the things that they really liked was arresting these Christians. Now, they didn't call them Christians, they called them people of the way messianic believers who believed in Yeshua, Jesus, that he was the Messiah. But now Herod takes James and has him beheaded. And what's so sad is James, who observed the law, who lived a kosher life, was beheaded. And it says it pleased then. That's very sad. And he proceeded further to seize Peter. So now he takes Peter, the big fisherman, the, the leader of the apostles, as it was thought. And it says it was during the days of unleavened bread. The, the unleavened bread there, the word in Hebrew, you know, is matzah. That's what we have for communion, matzah, unleavened bread. There the seven plus one days from Passover where you have Passover and then seven days of unleavened bread, you're to take all the yeast out of your house. That happens this time of year. Usually around the time that we celebrate Easter. Now it's interesting where it says in verse four that he was going to, intending to bring him before the people. That is to execute. They were going to execute Peter after Passover. And your old King James says Easter because for some reason, the old King James translators uh, put Easter in there instead of Passover, even though Easter is not even a word. Easter is after some false goddess. They, they never, they said Passover, and all through the book of Acts, it's Passover, because that's what the Jews observed. There was no Easter then. There was resurrection Sunday, but we don't even see that being observed. We see that being observed every Sunday. So... Peter was going to be chopped up, I guess, on the, after the Passover. And that's what it says. But it says in verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but in constant prayer offered to God for him by the church. The church kept him in constant prayer. That's awesome. There were prayer going up for Peter. Peter was in jail. Yeah, he was waiting. And you can imagine, it's Passover day, then the first day of unleavened, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and the days are going. And Peter's there, but he's being prayed for. In verse 6, And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the doors were keeping the prison. So Peter's there. And, and he's sleeping. That's what Peter did. Peter slept. 
You remember at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Peter slept. Peter slept. What happened the night Jesus was betrayed? Peter was snoozing there too. So he's he's a he's a grace person, and he and he was sleeping. But four squads of soldiers we remember were over Peter. Four squads. What in the world? What does it mean? Four squads. That means four sets of four men, 16 guys. We're watching over and taking turns on three hour shifts. So every three hours, a different group would be there. There was two guys that he was chained to, one at the door and one in the, in the jail. Why? Well, because Herod heard what happened last time Peter got arrested mm -hmm. and how he got arrested and then all of a sudden he's out in the street preaching because he got let out of jail by somebody. So. So I said, if it's somebody, we're going to have these guards. And so he has these four squads of soldiers that were watching him. And people were praying. And as we just read, they're there in the jail the night before he's about to get the sword himself. Verse 7, now behold, it says, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light shone in prison and struck Peter, or the old King James says, smote Peter on the side and raised him up and said, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Mm -hmm. Then the angel said, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. And when they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, to which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from it. So, very interesting scenario, true story. Peter was there, about to get his head cut off and he's sleeping the night before. You'd think he'd be up. Maybe Peter knew. Hey, maybe Peter remembered Jesus said that he was going to follow after him, like a crucifixion kind of thing. Maybe he believed that. He, he would write that some 40 years later. What happened some 50 years later, but hey, maybe Peter just was that secure in the Lord and he thought that He's going to make it. Maybe it's because the people were praying. Peter slept. But as he slept, it says, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. So you can imagine, the light's there. Now, what about the guards? They see this light. The light's so bright. It's just like when the angel appeared to Mary as Luke wrote about in Luke chapter 1, when the glory of the Lord shone round about her in the daylight. And now this light's here at night in the prison. And Peter's there and gets struck on the side. Now, that's interesting. He says struck on the side. He was still sleeping so soundly. He had to get smacked. He had to get pushed or smote, as the King James Version used. It's interesting, in 20, verse 23 of the same chapter, it says, the angel of the Lord smote Herod, and he was died and eaten up of worms. Mm -hmm. Same word for smote. Maybe I really had to give him a kick, a real shove, because Peter was sleeping, sleeping soundly. He says, arise quickly, and the chains fell off his hand. God sends the messenger, the angel, and the chains fall off his hands. And again, Peter thought it was a vision as we read. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. He thought it. But when they went past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. So now Peter's free. Peter's loosed from the jail again. 
even though there were four squads of soldiers, God had the angel. That's all God needed, one angel. God sent the angel, and Peter was free. Now Peter's good friend, James, who he lived with for years, was gone. He was beheaded. But Peter was still alive. It says in verse 11, And when Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angels and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Peter realized that the Lord Jesus delivered him. So when he had considered this, verse 12, he came to the house of Mary, mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Now, Mary was the mother of this John, who we know as Mark, the book of Mark. His real name was John, but he was called Mark by the disciples. Mark. And he would be a close associate with Peter. Peter would be the one who helps him as Mark compiled the Gospel of Mark. Mark, John Mark, we call him. John, whose surname was Mark. Where many were gathered together praying, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. <laughs> But these are the prayer warriors here in verse 15. But they said to her, you're beside yourself. Yet she kept on insisting it was so. So they said it's an angel. Now, it's a Jewish tradition that, you know, when somebody could be away or in jail, that their angel could sound like them. And they said maybe that. But Peter's there knocking at the gate. And it says in verse 16, now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished, but motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brothers. Now it's James, the Lord's brother. That's not James who was beheaded, but James who was Jesus' half-brother, who was a leader in the church of Jerusalem. Go tell these things to James and the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Now it's really interesting there, as we just leave off in verse 17, it says he went to another place. That's the last time we hear of Peter in the book of Acts. Last we hear of Peter, really. We hear of him in Galatians chapter 1 and 2, story about him and Paul. We hear other things of him in his epistles, but we don't hear any more. We know that he took his wife, Peter did, and went on a mission trip because in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says that Peter did that. But other than that, we don't see Peter anymore in the book of Acts. It's going to be a different route. And I'm sure Peter might have asked, just like we ask, how can God allow James to be beheaded? How can God allow that? Just like some of you were asking, how can God allow me to be locked up in my house with my family for four weeks? I can't take it. I'm about to jump off the roof right now. You know, that's what people are asking. That's just real. How can God allow this me to be fired from my job? I didn't do anything. How could God allow that to happen? We ask. We don't hear from Peter anymore, but verse 18 says, Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become Peter. The soldiers, if, you know, all these guys, you got to remember, they're 16. What happened? But, verse 19, when Herod searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. So all those guards were killed. God saved one man. He went down from Judah to Caesarea and stayed there. That's Peter again. That's where he ends up in Caesarea. 
Now, verse 20, now, Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord, and having made Blastus the king's personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace, because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So, verse 21, on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man, just like people did to Caesar. They said, the voice of a God and not men. Verse 23, then immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him. Same word that we looked at earlier, smote him. And he did not, because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. Again, gross story there in the book of Acts. He was smitten. Why, why didn't other leaders, other kings of Israel, why didn't that happen to Ahaz? Or, you know, that's what I say. Why weren't they eaten with worms? It's because the new covenant was in now. And God doesn't want to glory in any man but the Lord Jesus Christ. This guy didn't give glory to God, this king, and he was zapped dead and he died and was eaten by worms. Not a good thing to, you know, our friends, you know, we have friends today who blaspheme the Lord, atheists who mock God, and, you know, it would be fun to say to them, hey, I hope you get eaten by worm, but we can't do that. That's not, that's not grace. That's not God's love. But that's what people want to do. So some Christians even want to do. It's not what we're to do. We're to accept them and to take them where they're at. It's only God who can smite the king. And God can still do that. It's God who can loose the guards. He can still do that. God can do that right now if he wants to. It's God who would do that. God. And I wish we would wait on God. Said everybody on social media being the judge of who, what leaders, what. Verse 24, the chapter ends. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem. Remember, they came down from where they were at in northern Syria at a place called Antioch. They came to Jerusalem. It says they were there. They were with the people. It says, and they returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. They took the kid who lived in the house with them who we'll find out later was the boy who ran with his clothes off when Jesus got arrested. He's a young guy. And that's how we come to what we're gonna see next week in the church in Antioch. Now prophets and apostles were raised up and sent out. But for us this morning, we want to consider those questions. How and why? How was Peter released, but James got the sword? The question is asked because a lot of times, I remember being a young believer, and uh, I came out of a bad past, did a lot of really horrible things. And I would hear friends or somebody's son getting in a car accident, a little accident, and dying, and said, man, how many little accidents I was in, my friends driving drunk and I and everything else, or taking this drug and taking that one, and I never died. But somebody else takes it one time and they're gone. And, and I would say, why, Lord? Why? And I wanted to know why. How could God allow that to happen? Why does God allow that to happen to some, but then others and then we come to that question that we have to deal with, just like the church in Jerusalem had to deal with. How? Why, God? And he doesn't give us those answers. He doesn't give us those answers. We ask and ask and cry and cry, but he doesn't give us the answers. Why does this one go and this one stay? How come, God, you don't kill the wicked people? Why aren't you killed the wicked people, Lord? Then you're letting your people suffer. And we ask those questions, and there are questions we could ask. Why 
does a believer get coronavirus and yet a non-believer doesn't? Why? Why, God? We ask, how could this happen? And there's nothing wrong with asking those questions. I'm sure the apostles had the same question. Because all the apostles eventually would be martyred, killed for their testimony, including who we've read about, Barnabas and Paul and John Mark and Peter and everybody else. Why did God allow the apostles to die? Yet we say, hey, we're not gonna, nothing's going to happen to us. It's because God chose to. It's James' time to come home, that's why. Once your time to come home, there's nothing to stop you. Maybe Peter really did understand that. That's why he was sleeping. I don't know. But what are we going to do with that knowledge, knowing that, hey, I could get taken out tomorrow. I could be beheaded by the sword. I could die from being stoned. Being. But why? And even if it happens to you, people will ask the same question, why? And why does God allow this to happen to our country? Why did why does God allow this? You know, there's so many, 32 people died in this state of New Jersey yesterday. And it's like, who's next? Why, God? Well, the paranoid Christians are, oh no, I'm going to, we don't have to live in fear like that. You should do what you hear over and over again. Keep six feet apart. Don't touch, no kissing and hugging or any of that kind of stuff. And you'll be okay if you stay away from it. But if it's God's time for you to come home, it's going to be more beautiful than it is on this planet anyway. Really. What do you get living here? What do you get living there? And that's what's weird about us Christians is that we're going to live forever. The virus isn't going to kill. It's going to it might kill your body. But didn't Jesus say, don't fear him who can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and the soul? Didn't Jesus say that? Somebody could kill you and that's it, but God, he said, fear God who can take your body, your soul, and after you die, cast you into hell. That's, that's who I worry about. That's who I fear. But we don't have to fear because Jesus paid the price for our sins. So if we trust in him, we can live forever. And anyone can do that. All you got to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Don't trust in good luck charms and idols and statues and saints and Jesus relatives. Trust in Jesus. Jesus and him alone. Mm -hmm. And he'll deliver you. We're going to take this time. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper. And so... Uh, if you at home would get, run and get your, your bread and your wine or your cracker and your grape juice or your matzah and your grape juice, however you're going to do it, we here are going to use sterilized, clean, non-touch communion packs like maybe you at home might be doing. And so if, when everyone's served, I'm going to have to have one brought up to me. We're going to take them together, and then we're going to have some more worship. So if at home, I'll give you another second to get your stuff. Those of us who have these packs, if we take our, it's just like a little coffee creamer, this top layer, you take that top layer off, and you expose the, the uh, in this case, it's a wafer. Sometimes a piece of unleavened bread. And we're going to take the wafer, you take your cracker, your matzah, your bread of any kind at home. And as we do, we take the bread, we remember Jesus' body. Paul the Apostle said, the Lord Jesus on the night of his trade took the bread and he gave thanks. 
and he distributed the bread and told his disciples, take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Let's eat. As we prepare the cup, if you have one of these, you've got to rip open the next section and don't spill it. And we get our little fruit of the vine. The same supper, Paul continued. He took the cup and he distributed it to the substance and take this all of you and drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. It shall be shed for you and for all men. For as oft as ye do eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Not the kosher quality we're used to. I'm willing to take the real matzah in the cup next time, but it works. Amen. It's not what it is we, it's what we remember. And we remember Jesus' body and blood. We're thankful. So let's all, if you're at home, you want to put your community down, let's all stand. I want to stand for a worship song or two. And then I'll come back up and I'll close this out with a prayer. So let's worship the Lord and begin with that taste of the grape juice on your mouth, it's always good. The devil starts bothering you with sin, you always have that. I died. I died to sin. And bless us, Lord, as we continue to worship you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, we praise you.
Yahweh keep 